What's going on? Do you want to learn how to set up your Logitech G923 steering wheel to play Euro Truck Simulator 2? Here's how. First thing you want to do is open up Euro Truck. And then once you're in this screen here, you want to go down and find the options section here. Now, a good way to start off by doing this is to use the input wizard that's already in the game itself. So you want to go down to controls here, find input wizard, and here you have a few options. Now, obviously, we're not going to be using the keyboard. We're not going to be steering with the mouse. We're going to be using controllers. So once you're in controllers, we're obviously not going to be using a gamepad or a joystick. We're using a steering wheel. Open the steering wheel, and this depends on what you want to play the game as. You've got simple automatic, real automatic, sequential, and H shifter. Simple automatic is basically you want to use your pedals and the wheel. You just let the gears do their own thing. You let them do, you know, automatic gear shifting. I do believe that Simple Automatic also lets you use the foot brake to use reverse as well. But as you see in the description here, the simplest driving method designed especially, but not only, for the keyboard control. Press forward to drive forward, press back to brake or reverse. The gearbox will handle everything else for you, switch between driving, forward braking or reversing, shift into proper gears and so on. So like I say, it's just a simple automatic gearbox. You don't need to use your gear shift or anything like that. Real Automatic is about the same sort of thing, except um, it's ideal for wheel and pedals basically. So, same sort of thing, but it's more ideal using with pedals. Sequential is again similar to automatic, but instead of the game shifting for you, you shift with your paddles that you have on your steering wheel, or you set a button to do so. Same sort of thing. And the one that we're going to set up today is the H shifter, which is fully manual. You use the clutch and you use the gear stick that you may have with your G920 or G923 steering wheel. If you don't have this this option to have the gear stick, then obviously sequential and automatic is going to be the best bet for yourself. So we go into H shifter here, and now we're greeted with a couple of different options here. This is all dependent on how you want to play with the manual box. Personally, I select here. Obviously, when you're going up and down the gears, you want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, shift, and then go to your next range of boxes. So for this one, we're going to select range here. And as you can see here, we've got a few options. Steering axis is what you want to use on the wheel. Now, as you can see, I'm moving this here, but it's quite stiff on the steering wheel to turn as I've got the centering spring activated in Logitech G Hub. However, once you're in the game, you don't have to worry about that. So as, I, as you can see, I've already got all this set up for my own personal preference. So if we're setting the steering axis, you'd click on the steering wheel axis here and then you'd turn the wheel. And then it'd find the wheel for you. Obviously, you could change your dead zone. So like, say, for example, the full dead zone, I'd have to turn the wheel quite substantially it to work but it doesn't so i keep the steering dead zone centered at the bottom so when i turn slightly there is an input acceleration axis obviously you want to use your throttle pedal here as you can see here between accelerator and brake there is what we'd call combined the uh, combined accelerator and brake which basically means once you let off the accelerator the truck begins to brake so obviously if you want to change the combined settings like we've got here you want to click on the brake axis press the brake pedal and there we go we've got a brake and now we've got an accelerator i always keep these options as inverted so when you accelerate it accelerates and as you brake it begins to slowly brake same again here if you want to activate the clutch setting click on there press your clutch pedal in and now you see we have a clutch that works this setting would also want to be inverted as well so when the clutch is on it's disengaged and when the clutch is off it's engaged to drive here, I wouldn't look at look at these and use these as you'd probably be using the mouse to control the camera anyway. That's what I like to do personally. So once you're happy with all these settings here, we want to click on next. So now we're on to setting up the H shifter. I've included the camera here to show you what this is about. So as you can see on the screen here, we go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And as you notice, that was all completely wrong. So to change this and to make this correct for yourself, you want to click on here select reverse so for the reverse for me is push down on the stick far right in here which is now locked into reverse we then release that and that selects the button for us we then move on to shift to position one which takes us into there we pull it out and we're into there there's the button set up for it then we repeat this process for two for three four five and gear six now as you can see here one two three four five and six it's all set up as well as the reverse gear here 
Now, here comes the fun part. You have two settings here for shift to toggle one and shift to toggle two. Now, this is what I mentioned earlier with the range boxes. So let's say you have a 12 speed box on your truck. You go one to six, you shift up, go from seven to 12. If a 16 speed box, one to six, seven to 12, 13 to 18 maths. So the way that I set this up is I use shift to toggle one on the paddle on the steering wheel here. I should toggle to here on the paddle. So when they, so when you're in the, in the position to change it up the gear, you leave it in sixth. You press the button, and then you can swap to the gear here. So we'll show you here. As you can see, it's a little bit confusing to do, especially when you're in game. So if I go from one, two, three, through to gear six, change up, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, twelfth. So for them, once you're happy, we click next, and here you are. You finish the wizard. As simple as that. And here you have all your wheels and things set up. Now, obviously, this is where you want to fine tune and select different stiffnesses, your feedback gain, your force feedback, and so on and so forth. Obviously, as you can see here, my accelerator is now set up, the brake is now set up, the steering is set up. Obviously, it feels really heavy because we're not in the game yet. But let's get into the game and see if our settings have changed. So, now it's time to test the wheel and make sure everything works correctly. So, as you can see here, we're in the game. We're going to test the lock to lock and make sure the steering works. So what I want to do is turn the wheel full left. That's full lock left. As you can see, the wheel in the game moves and the wheel itself moves. And then we've got the complete opposite way. And as you can see, the wheel in the game moves and this moves. So now we go back central. Everything's nice and central. Now when you're in the wizard, the wheel will feel stiff because you're not actually playing the game. And that's down to Logitech's application. Now, once the wheel is detecting input, it will find the source of the steering, so you'll be fine. Um, so as you can see, the steering wheel now works. There are other options as well, where you are, when you turn the steering wheel, your camera will move. However, I don't like this because it's just it just looks weird. So having your mouse to hand as well while you're driving along to look around, see where you're going, absolutely fine. So now we're going to test to make sure the gearbox now works. So what you want to do, obviously put your clutch in into first we're going to test the clutch the vehicle has now stalled which is which is fine which is what you want to happen the reason for this is that when i'm pressing the clutch in it's a temporary neutral so that the gear isn't engaged and then obviously to the park brake off when i start to release the clutch up it starts to bite you put your throttle on as you were driving a normal vehicle so we know the first works second works third fourth fifth, sixth, you don't have to be driving to test this out. Reverse also works. As long as you're keeping the foot on the clutch, you can test all your gears as you're slowly moving along. Like I said, it's a temporary neutral. So this particular vehicle, I believe, has a 12-speed or a 16-speed box. We'll find out. So if we go from first, we'll click the, we'll click the paddle here, which takes us into 13th gear, which would take us right through to 16-speed. So if we click that, click that again, we'll go here, and we've obviously the 1 to 6 range box. We click the right pedal shifter here, and that takes into 7 to 12th range. So now that you're happy that your vehicle is working and driving and changing gears as you'd expect, there are other options to change, like your visual settings, your field of view, your false feedback, and other things like that. If you want to see things like that, we can do that in another video. Please feel free to let me know in the comments what you want to see. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you want any more tips, let me know and I'm happy to make a video. See you soon. Happy trucking.